With the recent passing of Phil Spector, I decided to release an excerpt from an upcoming podcast series with my dad, Gary Ladinsky, about his crazy experience recording with Phil Spector and John Lennon back in the 70s. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to Hanging with Hollis podcast. I'm here with my dad, Gary Ladinsky, and this is our first series behind the console with Gary Ladinsky. So my dad is a accomplished and well-known recording engineer. And this is, you know, I knew, I knew you did a lot of cool stuff, but over the summer I realized I, you told me you worked with John Lennon on the Lost Weekend sessions as an assistant at the record plant in the early to mid 70s. And you said it didn't go very well. So can you tell our listeners what happened? What was, what well, was it like? Work- it didn't go well for me. I, I don't know. It might have gone well for them. But, uh, but it, you know, it, John came in with Phil Spector as a producer. And I guess he, he had put the reins over to Phil to bring in the musicians he wanted. It. And he, he came in, you know, and is famous for his wall of sound kind of uh, his take on recording. And so I was an assistant engineer. I was asked to do the session. I said, sure. And I go in there and set up the studios. We had two drummers, two bass players, three guitar players. Uh, John had an acoustic setup in the studio so he could play and sing. Um, we had ISO booth with a percussionist or I don't know, horn players, I think. But anyways, it was just, you know, it was a big setup and a lot of people and a lot You're of people. You were in Studio A, we were studio which was a small, a small control room, right? Small control room. And we right. had probably 15 or 20 people in the control room. People were sitting down in front. John John, and, and uh, Phil were, had seats at the console, the engineer. Um, and I don't remember who was engineering it, but, um, uh, and so I was an assistant and there was, I think there's another person with me as assistant, just in case, cause there's so much happening, but you know, the sessions went, they did some recording and, uh, come in for playbacks and all kinds of stuff. And Phil and his kind of wild kind of manner way was just acting out and going crazy. John was pretty calm and cool and, you know, and, uh, taking it all in stride. But Phil just kind of went crazy and he got hyper and he pulled out his gun. I don't remember, it was the 38 or something. He pulled it out and he waving it around the room and talking and stuff. And, you know, I'm in the back of the room by the tape machines and he's just like walking around or waving around the room. and I'm ducking and people are ducking and it wasn't very comfortable. It wasn't a very comfortable scene. So, um, uh, you know, I, they worked, I worked with them for two days and then I asked to be taken off the session. I just said, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's, it's a thrill to work with them, but I don't, I don't want to do it. And, uh, management was fine. Cause there's always somebody else who wanted to do it, but you know, it, it just, it got too dangerous for me. And then actually, uh, Phil had gone into, we have some rooms in the, in in, in, in the record plant, we had like a canteen with beer machine and pinball and we had a sauna and we had a jacuzzi room. But he uh, went off into the sauna room that night and shot his gun off into the ceiling. So it was kind of a frightful, frightful thing. But uh, so I didn't want to be on it on that session anymore. And as it turned out, when record plant was torn down, you know, 20 years later, uh, one of the carpenters who was one of the engineers at the record plant found the piece of wood with the bullet in it. And then he's, he's got it at home as his trophy. But it's funny. It, yeah. So that was, that was the wild I, times. Wild times. Yeah. I, I, well, I think most people listening would be like, I'd do anything to be in the room with John Lennon. And you said uh, you must have had seniority at the record plant to be like, I need to get transferred off this nut house. And, um, you know, it was too many... Well, I mean, you obviously, you know, you probably made the right decision because Phil Spector was, yeah, it, it, it's is just, officially nuts. Yeah, and we know it. <laughs> He's in jail. Now. So, but yeah, I just didn't feel comfortable. And I had the luxury of, you know, bowing out. So I got to ask for our listeners, like, you know, I didn't even know you worked with John, but so what was it? What was John Lennon like? And um, I know your interactions were as an assistant engineer, so you were working there, but... You said he was sweet. Is what I yeah, it was very him, nice. So. I mean, you know, when we got there, I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Gary. I'm an assistant here. I'll, anything you need, I'll be happy to, you know, 
just let me know anything. And he was very sweet and very nice. And, you know, just, yeah, yeah, mate. Thank you. And <laughs> it, it was cool. I mean, you know, just, just like one of the guys hanging with the guys. And that's, that's, that was the best part of the recording scene. It was just being there with, with everybody and just like your, your neighbors. Friends. Right. Yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoyed hanging with Hollis and hearing crazy stories from my dad. I've got many more to tell in this podcast series that I'm still editing now. Uh, when it's done, you can find it on my website at www.keithhollis.com and anywhere you find and listen to podcasts. All right, stay safe out there.